So I'm going to um, recite a poem called The Shooting of Daniel Groom that was written by um, a Scottish man called Robert W. Service who um, emigrated to um, Canada in the 19th century and um, this particular story hails from the Yukon Gold Rush of uh, 1898. It's called The Shooting of Dan McGrew, first told to me by my father many, many moons ago. So, uh, an apology, I may glance down at um, my iPad because there's rather, there's rather a lot to it and I haven't recited in many a moon, so um, if I forget, I shall glance down, but I'll do my best not to. So, The Shooting of Dan McGrew. A bunch of the boys were whooping it up in the Malamute Saloon. The kid that handles the music box was hitting a ragtime tune. Back at the bar in a solo game sat dangerous Dan McGrew. And watching his luck was his light of love, the lady that's known as Lou. When out of the cold that was fifty below, and into the din and the glare, the stumbled a miner fresh from the creeks, dug dirty and loaded for beer. He looked like a man with a foot in the grave with scarcely the strength of a louse. Yet he tilted from his poke some dust on the bar and he called for drinks for the house. There was none of us could place the stranger's face, though we searched ourselves hard for a clue. But we drank his health and the last to drink was dangerous Dan McGrew. Well, there's men that somehow just grip your eyes and hold them hard in a spell. And such was he, and he looked to me like a man who'd lived in hell, with a face most hair and a dreary stare of a dog whose day is done. And he watered the green stuff in his glass, and the drops fell one by one. And then I got to figuring who he was and wondering what he'd do. And I turned my head and there watching him was the lady that's known as Lou. His eyes went rubbering around the room. He seemed in a kind of daze till at last the old piano came in the way of his wandering gaze. The ragtime kid was having a drink, there was no one else on the stool, so the stranger stumbles across the floor and he flops down there like a fool. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt, he sat and I saw him sway. Then he clutched the keys with those Talon hands. My God, but that man could play. Were you ever out in the great alone when the moon is awful clear and the icy mountains hemmed you in with the silence you most could hear and only the howl of the timber wolf as you camped out there in the cold, a half dead thing in a stark dead world, clean mad for the muck called gold, while high overhead, green, yellow, and red, the northern light swept in bars, then you've a hunch what the music meant. Hunger, night, and stars. And not the, the hunger of the, the belly kind, nah. That's Spanish with bacon and beans. But the gnawing hunger of lonely men for a home and all that it means. A fireside far from the cares that are four walls and a roof above. And oh, so crammed full of cosy joy. And crowned with a woman's love. A woman dearer than all the world and true as heaven is true. My God, how ghastly she looks through her rouge, the lady that's known as Lou. Then on a sudden the music changed, so soft that you scarce could hear. But you felt that your life had been looted clean of all that you once held dear. That someone had stolen the woman you loved and her love was a devil's lie. That your guts were gone. And the best for you was to crawl away and die. It was the crowning cry of a heart's despair and it thrilled you through and through. I 
I guess I'll make a spreed me's air, said dangerous Dan McGrew. The music almost died away. Then it burst like a pent-up flood, and it seemed to say, repay, repay, and my eyes were blind with blood, and the thought came back of an ancient wrong, and it stung like a frozen lash, and the lust awoke to kill, to kill. <coughs> and the music stopped with a crash, and the stranger turned. And his eyes they burn in a most peculiar way. And his lips went in in a kind of grin. And he spoke, and his voice was calm. <coughs> and boys, to see, you don't know me. And none of you give a fucking damn. But I want to state, and my words are straight, I bet me poke they're true. One of you is, is a hound of hell, and that one's Dan McGrew. Then I ducked me head and the lights went out and two guns blazed in the dark, and a woman screamed and the lights went up and two men lay stiff and stark. Pitched on his head and pumped full of lead was dangerous Dan McGrew. While clutched to the breast of the man from the creeks was the lady that's known as Lou. Well, <clears throat> these are the simple facts of the case and I, I guess I ought to know. They say the stranger was crazed with hoosh. I'm not denying it so. I'm not as wise as the lawyer guys. But strictly between us two, the lady that kissed him and pinched his poke was the lady that's known as Lou.